Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am back with another one of my watch me make something with these scraps or whatever videos. I've been in the habit lately that when I make a quilt top, I save the scraps for that. And I have several little trays like this with scraps and I looked at them and I think this looks like the easiest one to tackle. So we're going to do this one today. It doesn't look like I have too much sometimes. I make quilt kits, so I have a lot of scraps, but I did quilt kits for this one. I don't know why this is all I have. I guess the way, oh yeah, it was a long quarter strip quilt, so there really wasn't much for scraps because I was just cutting long quarters and selling them like that. So this was, like I said, my one hour long quarter quilt. I will link to that video down below. You can go watch it. And let's look at what I have. I know I have some big pieces. And I know I have done a couple of the pet beds uh, or, you know, pet blankets or quilts or whatever. And I think I'm going to do that again because it's just, I just love it. I'm going to have you go down below and check out a link. I've showed it before, but I want you guys to see it. Of someone who won one of my um, pet beds. It was the homespun and muslin. And her animals just you know, she has beautiful pictures of her cats and a big dog. I had a, a blanket and a pillow. And it's just so funny to see the cats wanting to lay on the pillow. And that big dog laid on this little pillow. You can see it just like sticking out from under him. It's so cute. So I just really like that. And I think because I have some big pieces, I can make a top. But this is the shit that I have a harder time with. But I have some ideas. Let's see. Okay, so this is what we have. We have two green pieces like this. These are all the same print, but different colors. There was more colors than this, but I don't know. This is what I used. And then I have four squares that I don't know if they are the same size. I don't care. And they have a selvage on one edge. So like that and like that. So this can be a four patch. I could, you know, cut and do some things, but I don't know. We'll see. I have to see what this <laughs> is going to do for me. And yes, I do allow myself to put the scrappiest of scraps inside the pillow if I make a pillow. And I think I'm going to make a pillow because here's the deal. I have these two pieces also with salvage. And then I have some just salvages. And I could cut the selvages off these and use them in a different way, but I think I'm going to leave the selvages on. And I was thinking that I can just build selvages like this. Okay, see the selvage edge is pointing to me, and then the next selvage edge, there's no white on these, but it won't, um, they won't fray or anything because it's a selvage. So I was just thinking of doing something. I have to see how many I have. And... You know, maybe doing whatever I can with salvages and then end with this guy. So it would give like a pillow. I'm hoping I can make it more square. I'm sure I can. It would give a pillow with just some stuff happening in the center. I don't know. The pets don't mind. They'll take anything. And my only rule is that I do have to use all the scraps, which, like I said, there's not very many, and they can go in the pillow. And then I will use muslin for the backing. My muslin is in. It's in my eBay store. I was out of stock for a little bit. Um, my unbleached muslin, and I have some pieces that I can probably use, like end-of-bolt stuff. That's what I plan on using for the backing. So let me just think, and I'll be right back. Here's what I'm thinking for the top of the little bed. Here's my four pieces. I wanted to mention, was it this one? Yes. I think you might be able to see it in the video. I'm not sure. Um, there was like a smudge or something there and I just took a damp cloth. It just looked like, you know, something, you know, how sometimes bolts are on the floor or whatever at the store, you know, so it came off. If you saw a little smudge there, I got rid of it. So I could do just this, but I would like to, you know, use some of these strips, at least, you know, the parts that are kind of wide. So I don't know how I had that. Um, this strip has a lot of wide, but I don't want the gray because I already have the gray in here. But I don't have the green and I don't have the orange. 
and the green, it gives me a little bit of narrow. I'd have to trim that. It would be very narrow. And then I'd have to, you know, trim this one the same as the green. But I think I kind of like that. It adds some color. So let's try that. And then um, uh, let me just set up for this and then we'll worry about the pillow after. Okay, the green... I think got narrower than the orange, yes. So I'm going to um, just add this. I'm not even trimming it yet. It's going to need to be trimmed. But I'm going to just sew it on to these two squares first. And then it'll be easier for me to trim after. So I'm just going to do like we do for crumb quilting. I'm going to, I do have one straight edge, so I'm going to take the straight edge of this block. Well, I'm going to start with this one because I want as much wideness as I can get. So I'm going to put this block here on the straight edge and this one too on the straight edge. And then I'm just going to sew here and then I'll be snipping that apart. You seem so far away from me. <laughs> I ended up switching the position because I had turned the gray block. I just want the salvages to be on the edge just because I thought it would, you know, I don't know. I just wanted it that way. And I had flipped this one, so I caught it before I did this one. So I just changed the position. All right, so I sewed this on with just an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And I did a, you know, a, a short stitch. So it would, uh, you know, it would be good. And now I'm going to trim, and I need to trim to whatever this one allows. So let me see. It's going to be a very narrow border. And I would have liked to have done my, not border, uh, sashing. I would have liked to have done my narrow sashing method, but I don't know how that works with an intersection. So I can get, ooh, almost a half inch so I'm gonna go with a half inch so I'm just putting my line on that edge and uh, where's my thingamajiggy right here here we go yay oh I'm not throwing that away it's gonna go inside the pillow and then let's just get rid of this little thing oops right there gonna save save you know, I only do this because it's fun to challenge myself. I, You know, of course I have other scraps I could add to this, but I just want to, you know, use what is left of whatever project I did, and, um, and that's that. So now I'm going to do a half inch on this one also. I'm going to do the beige. Oh, and my salvage has to go that way up top and this one the salvage on the bottom cool beans all right so i'm just going to be what the hell i have this wrong again <laughs> this one here this one here okay so this one here because i want the pink and the blue kitty corner and the beige and the gray kitty corner do i have this all right now yes i do Okay, so this one's going to go to this, and this one's going to go to this. And I'm actually going to sew on this side so I can see where I am on my strip. I like that little line of color. It's very interesting. And I didn't do an even job. That's okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the orange. I have one straight edge, so I'm just going to uh, sew this I might trim this a little bit, and um, yeah, I'm just going to trim this, and then I will have two straight edges, and I will sew this to here, come back, and trim. I wouldn't have to do a half inch on that one. I could do it wider, because there are no rules. All right, let me at least trim this and sew this on. I've got this on. This is, I don't know, it's almost straight enough. I guess I could trim it. I just trimmed this piece. Let me trim this one. And I'm just going to see what I get here. Well, it's a little over a half of an inch. I guess I'll just go with a half inch. Okay, this goes on here. And um, 
I'm sewing down here, but I'm going to do it on this side. This came out great. I really like it. Just a little extra bit of color in there. It looks nice. Now before I back this, let's work on the pillow. The top of the pillow. The front of the pillow, I should say. This is what I have to work with for the little pillow. And maybe some kind of a border out of this piece. I wouldn't have enough to go all the way around, but I might be able to cut this in half. The wide part. I don't know. We'll worry about that when we get there. I think I will go ahead and put this on a piece of one-sided fusible just to stabilize it a little bit. And then I have this stick. I don't know why I have just the one stick. Do I have another stick? No, that's just the trimming. And it's folded, so I could use that as a fake salvage, which I did in a video recently. I have a playlist on what I do with salvages, so I will link to that down below. It can go like on a piece and then put the other one just on top of it so the fold is acting like the salvage. I don't know. It would give a little tiny bit of color. Let me cut some fusible and I'll just get started. I had this little piece of scrap and I'm making sure my glue side is facing up and it's just about the right width. I don't care if my fabric is um, over the edge a little bit. So I'm going to see how this goes. Okay, I'm going to start with one of my greens. Salvage edge is pointing to me. And I have these kind of lined up in the order that I want them. There's two of the same blue, so I'm doing one on each end. And then I just have the others, whatever, mixed up inside here. Okay. So I'm just going to go over a little bit, at least an eighth of an inch. And this one, and yes, the TV is on now. You can hear my mother's TV. And here, and I am going to toss this in here, right there. <laughs> and I'm going to try to almost cover it. There's going to be just a tiny piece of green peeking through. And salvage. And then this. Whoops. Oh, do likey likey. Okay. Oh shit. My iron has to be tipped over so it will start warming up. Hang on. We're in business. Good, good. I'm just going to trim this off. And now I can get right up to the edge there. Press that. And as always, I'm just going to the machine and I'm going to top stitch on the edge of each salvage. I'm so mad. I found a salvage on the floor. It must have fallen off and I'm actually going to um, add it. I'm going to peel this off. I bet you I can probably stick it back down. I don't know. We're going to learn something new here for the first time. Ew, I'm making holes. I don't really care if it's on the fusible. Okay, it's ripping off. All right. I'm going to show you what not to do. Oh, it might work. I'm adding this. Get out of there, thread. And I'm going to put this back here. And I don't care if that sticks down. Actually, I could, um, oh, tell you what, hang on. I have this little hem tape. So I'm going to use it. Let me um, put a piece here across right there for this guy. I'm a little bit bummed that my oranges aren't better separated, but I'm okay with that. It's all for fun. And uh, that was too big of a piece. I'm going to put this here. And then this will at least stick there a little bit. Okay. See, we can do what we want. Good. Pressing again.
I love this stuff. Um, I happen to get mine at my surplus salvage store, Martin's, uh, but I'll link to it down below to something similar to this, so that'll be down there. Okay, now I'm ready for real. I looked everywhere to make sure there wasn't anything else on the floor. I'm going to go sew on each edge. So this is what we have. And again, I know I say it every time, but I just start stitching and I turn my piece and then I go in this direction and then I turn and I go here and then I go down and I turn and I go here. So I just do the whole thing without having to, um, you know, stop and cut my thread and turn it around. And so it works out really well. All right, I'm happy with this. So I'm thinking that, let me see, let me see what we can do with this. Um, that would be wide enough and that would be enough. But then see, we just got little skinny things here. Yeah, that's not gonna be. So I could get two strips out of this, I would imagine. They would be about, three quarters of an inch, because this is a, like an inch and a half, so three quarters of an inch, and uh, I definitely could get two more three quarters of an inch uh, strips out of this. So let me trim this and let me cut some strips for border. I have two strips three quarters of an inch wide that I am going to add to each side. And now I have a strip for each end, and I'm going to sew those on. This is what I have. It's going to be a little rectangular pillow. And I have this. I think it's going to be a cute little set. Now, I am going to finish this in this video, but I have to switch gears and do other stuff. So I will be back to finish this tomorrow. It is the next day. I am back and I am ready to wrap things up with this pet bed and pillow. Here's what I did. I have an idea. I'm going to try it. And I don't know if it's going to work or not, but that's how we find out, right? We try things and then we find out if they work. I have my batting scrap and it needed to be a little bit <laughs> taller this way. I had another scrap, so I stitched those together. You can do that. Just overlap one over the other a little bit and do a nice wide zigzag and it's on there. And I'm going to use muslin for the backing, but I'm just going to do my sew and then turn. I hope this is big enough now. And I'm putting my top right side down and I purposely wanted this extra around the edges. Let me see. Let me stretch this one out a little bit. Good, good. Right? And then I have... No, I want the muslin first because I want to be able to sew around the pillow thing. So let's see. This is a scrap that was the end of the bolt. Very wrinkled when they're at the end. I did press it, but... Um, it's still wrinkled. And you know what? I'm going to use this as a guide. Okay, I'm getting confused. I'm just going to make the muslin a little bit bigger just so I know that I'm catching both layers. So let me just do a rough cut around this. I'm leaving the salvage on there, all that stuff. Don't care. Now I will build the sandwich this and then the muslin and then this guy the muslin doesn't have a right side or a wrong side if it did you would want the right side facing up and then the top of the uh, bed facing down now i'm just going to go sew all the way around but i'm going to leave an opening right there and then i will be turning it I didn't pin this at all, so it shifted quite a bit, but that's okay. I think we can still do what I wanted to do. We'll experiment and uh, we'll see how it comes out. Okay, I have a long, like, yarn needle and some fairly thick thread. I just thought it would be a good way to use up this thick thread that's too thick for me to sew with on my machine. 
and I'm going to just roll this. I'm going to push the muslin out of the way. I'm not trimming it. I'm just going to leave it. I just want to tack this down a little bit. So I'm just going to um, sew through just the, um, what the hell am I trying to say? The batting. It's not that it has to be permanently uh, attached. It's just for the flipping of the, um, you know, when we turn it. So there's a little knot. Okay, so I'm just going to go, I'm going to do like, oh, all of a sudden I can't even think of the name of the stitch. Is that a, no, it's not a whip stitch. Running stitch, just going in and out, in and out, just to tack it a little bit here and there. And hopefully this will work. What I'm trying to do is when I turn it, I'm trying to get the edge a little bit puffier because I like it when the edge puffs a little bit. And then I will sew on the inside of that puff. Uh, we'll see. And I didn't do anything with the corners yet because I don't know if I can leave the corners or not. See, that's just enough to hold it. Now, corner. I'm going to fold it in. I'm not going to trim it. I'm going to leave it. I'm just going to keep tacking. And I'm just going to do that all the way around. And I will add more thread there shortly because I'm going to need a more thread. Ow! Damn it. I just did a like really shitty job attacking this. <laughs> I think it's going to be okay. Where's my opening? I'm going to be a flipping this now. Okay, so I just made a mistake. I stuck my hand between the fabric and the batting. No, you have to stick your hand between the two pieces of fabric. Okay, this is somewhat what I wanted. I just would have liked it to be a little bit puffier even than this, but uh, it's a good first attempt. Quite happy about it because I can feel, you know, the edge. So now what I have to do is I have to stitch this, which could be a little bit more tricky. I'm just going to stick the corners. Oh, and the corners are really you know, stuffed. So kitty or puppy might like to put their head on the corner if they're not using their pillow or if they have to share with somebody else. Um, I'm going to stitch this closed. I'm just going to top stitch and I'm not going to go around the edge, but after I stitch this closed, I'm going to come in and just make sure that, you know, yeah, it's all tacked and I'm going to come in and I'm going to top stitch around the bed like that. So that way if the tacking comes apart, nothing's going to unroll. I like it. Okay, I'm going to close and stitch around. You guys, this is frigging adorable. I love it. Even though it's not too much of a raised edge, I mean, it really looks like a little bed now, doesn't it? Here's the deal. I just eyeballed as best as I could, you know, to try to be the same distance. You know, it's not perfect, but that's okay. And when I got to the very end, I started and stopped here. I started here and stopped here. There was a little pucker that was about to happen, and I was so sad, and I thought maybe I should take it apart and, you know, pick some stitches for a few inches and then redo it. And I was so thrilled to see that I had run out of bobbin thread about here. So I said I have a second chance. And so I put a new bobbin and I came and I still have the tiniest of a pucker. 
I mean, you can barely see it. Where is it? It's like right there. See the little pucker right there? Just want to show you that. Other than that, I love it. I didn't even look at the back. I probably have puckers. No, I have some wrinkles. <laughs> I don't think I have any puckers anywhere. Oh my god. Okay, and then my opening, like I said, I just stitched it. And I left quite a big opening because I thought it would be, you know, kind of hard to to pass all that through with the thick edges. That was very easy to do. This was easy to do. I did sew a little bit. I could feel that I was on some of the batting. And that's okay. Oh my god, this is just so cute. And I wanted to mention, because this is going to be on eBay, starting at a penny, an auction. Free shipping in the USA, outside of the USA, pays shipping. This and the pillow. If you win this for your pets, let me know that when you pay. And I will give you an email that you can send me a picture, if you would like. And I could feature your pet on my blog or pets. Do go check out the images that I showed you, the pictures that I talked about before about the other pets on one of the little blankets and pillow that I made. They're just so adorable. So that's why I like to make these kinds of things. And this is the first time that I made anything like this with a little bit of a raised edge and I think it came out great. Now let's do the pillow. I have a piece of batting and I use the polyester batting because I happen to have scraps of that and it also makes it uh, lighter generally for when I ship things out. And uh, even the muslin that I'm using is scraps left over from ends of bolts, stuff like that. So it's all done with scraps. So I have a piece of batting and then I have my muslin and then my top. Make sure that that is batting under all of it. And again, I'm going to leave an opening. I'm going to sew around the rest. And then I'll be stuffing it with, I had a little bit of batting scraps that I trimmed off. And a little bit of muslin scraps. And then the scraps from this project, that's all that's left. Even the little trimmings. A little piece of batting like that. I was going to do two layers of batting, but I think that one layer will be enough with the stuff that I shove in there. And I do have some other batting scraps that I could use also. Okay, going to sew around this. And again, I don't trim any of the stuff. It just helps to stuff it. So, hand between the fabric. Wow, could I have left any of a smaller hole? And I have a thread there. Probably should have used two layers. We'll see. Okay, I mean, I knew it wasn't going to be puffy, but I don't think that this is going to be enough. Uh, let me go get some more uh, batting scraps. Here's what I did. I took a piece of batting and I folded it and then I sewed on both edges and I left an opening and I'm going to stuff this and then... Uh, so it closed and then shove that in there. Huh? How does that sound? So let's see. I'm going to put this piece of batting. It'll just add a little bit to it and the stuff won't shift around as much. And let's see, I guess I could cut some of this stuff a little bit. And I have plenty of other shreds that I can use. Oh, look, looky, looky, we have this. Okay. I think we've got this. That's going to be so nice. I'm trying to keep it more puffy in the center. Let's shove another piece here. Okay, I'm going to close this. And now I'm going to shove this, threads and all. <laughs> Can I get that in there? What do you think? I didn't think about that, did I? Shit. Well, it's because I wasn't expecting to make a pillow to go in the pillow. I might be able to get it in there. Ugh. Oh, sure. 
Now let's just try to flatten it out a little bit. Ha 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 ha! Okay, that's nice. Now I just have to close here. I don't know you guys. This might be my new favorite. I just love this little pet bed so much and this little pillow. Oh, it's just adorable. Don't you like it? I hope that um, you give something like this a try. You can tell I started with scraps. Well, I mean, I had some nice pieces here, but still they were just leftovers of a quilting project. Again, when you see that, you don't say to yourself, ooh, pet bed. You know, some people say, I don't have enough fabric here to do much of anything, so I'll just get rid of it. I love it. The salvages, everything. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. The eBay link will be down below in the description box. That exists. Go find it. And uh, I'll be back with more soon. Bye!